The harvest is ripe, but the laborers are few. Why did he use that word? God goes to extreme measures to bring the loss to himself. The greatest gift you will ever give this world is your intimacy with God. The Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit are all three inside of me. I've got the power right now. I think what Jesus really wants is people to go. I want to be the answer to Jesus' prayer request. Welcome to the Fuel for the Harvest podcast. When this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world, then shall the end come. Hey everyone, and welcome to this latest episode of Fuel for the Harvest. This is Nathan. And this is Charlie. We're your hosts for today, and we have just been seeing God do incredible things in the U.S., across the country, um, and at first we didn't really expect it. Uh, with COVID happening um, over the last year, year and a half or so, uh, and people being locked up, locked in, uh, not going out, not engaging as much. We're really excited to see that starting to shift more and more. Um, but with that happening, especially in young people, uh, we've seen a sort of dullness. Yeah, almost like a, almost like a glazed overness. Yeah, like they're lifeless. They're dry. Like there's nothing there. Yeah, and that's interesting when w- we travel and preach. <laughs> it's like. Uh, Hello, earth to crowd. Is anybody there? Uh, hello, hello. Uh, Houston, we have a problem. They're <laughs> they're glazed over. Not not as good as a glazed donut either. Um, not that kind of glaze. So uh, we're like, man, things seem really dry right now. And so we just started praying, Lord, um, would you spark revival? Would you see something happen? And the more we thought about it, we're like, actually, this is the perfect setup. Like, when things are dry, it's a perfect setup for a match to be lit and dropped. And man, whew, fire's going to spark. Right. So we're we're beginning to see the to see revivals take place. We're hearing word from other ministries and other traveling pastors and uh, preachers that they're seeing revival take place. We're seeing it here in the organization at Forge. Uh, God is at work. He is moving, and it's exciting to see what he's doing. Uh, We're praying for more and more and more. Uh, If you're a faithful follower of Jesus out there, you're probably the same as us looking out at the culture and being like, oh man, (laughs) we are not a Christian nation, or it doesn't seem like we're a Christian nation anymore. I don't know how you feel about that necessarily, but uh, there's major struggles going on, not not just that people aren't Christians, but that they're opposed to Christians. They're opposed to Christian views, Christian morality. They're opposed to the scriptures. Um, there's just a, a, a great amount of a, like pushback and a great amount of darkness. And so we're, we're praying that God will spark a revival, that he'll bring, uh, he'll give our nation another chance, that he'll allow us to get up close to him once again, to be transformed by him, to be a a nation blessed by him once again. And it's, it's fascinating to see, uh, God, it seems like throughout history has sparked great revivals through itinerant evangelists, those who travel from place to place preaching, but then it's carried on and the, the spark becomes flame and, and wildfire through those people whose hearts were sparked and then take it back into the everyday sphere. Right. And we're not just talking about like in the last 200 years of the American history. We're talking from the beginning. Yeah. Uh, you've got um, Philip and the Ethiopian eunuch changing East Africa for all of history. Uh, you've got um, uh, Philip, the evangelist, going into a city and seeing just revival break out. That's just in scripture. And then, of course, the last uh, several hundred years in the U.S. and American history of great sweeping revivals across the nation um, being sparked by itinerant evangelists and carried on forward and flamed into fruition by the everyday person. Um, Anyway, that's our prayer right now in this season is that we'll see this kind of thing happen from place to place. And I think we're seeing glimpses right now. Right. Uh, just here and there. Like one of the – an itinerant evangelist on the Forge team, Adrian Dupre, uh, recently – uh, he was doing a revival in his hometown of all places uh, and his church set up meetings uh, throughout the week. And then the final meeting was an a community event where everyone in the community was invited. They put out flyers, people invited people, and, and scores of people showed up from the community. It was an outdoor event. And he preached 
And over 50 people gave their lives to Christ, first time salvation from the community, scores of them being baptized right then and there and at that church on Sunday, being brought into the church to become growing disciples of Christ. I mean, boom, right there in that community, God was bringing new life as the gospel was preached. Praise the Lord. It's amazing. I mean, what else are you going to say about that? (laughs) And we're hoping for more. We're hoping and hoping and hoping for more. Just like Charlie was saying a few minutes ago, there's this, it's almost as if the, the, the kindling of the fire is set. Like all of the, all of the elements to spark the fire are there. And all we're missing is just that catalyst, that, that spark to get it going. Yeah. I was, um, preaching just a month ago, uh, in Florida at a a spiritual emphasis week for young people. And it was feeling kind of dry at first. It was a little bit of a tough, tough breakthrough on the front end. I'm going, man, I'm going to give it my everything and pray, 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 Lord, do your thing. Uh, but it's a little tough to start. And, um, by the time the week had ended, 124 out of 300 in the crowd had, had, responded to receive salvation and give their lives to Jesus fully. Mm. And I was shocked. Like that's out of Christian school. Yes. I was like, no, 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 guys, guys, this is if you don't think you're saved and you need to give your life to Jesus. And they all stood up like, yeah, we need to give our lives to Christ. They're all standing there. I was like, wow. And I had talked with, with some of the leaders. They're like, yeah, a small percentage here probably authentically know and love Jesus. And not only that, but 47 were called to missions, mm. like the unreached to the field. And um, that's in addition to scores of others who committed to local mission, reaching uh, their neighbors for Christ, as we're all called to do. And they said, I'm going to com- commit to that. Yeah. Here's who God put on my heart to reach for Christ. I'm going, wow, God sparked a fire of 124 saying, I'm going to give our, we're going to give our lives to Christ. And scores of others saying, we're going to commit to local mission and others being called out by the spirit of God to the unreached, to the ends of the earth. I'm like, man, it seems like God is sparking a new fire in that place. People, uh, staff and leaders and teachers at the school were saying students are coming to us and coming to the principal saying how Jesus is changing their heart. Their heart's set on fire. Woo-hoo. And uh, so God was stirring something there. But it's not just there. It's not just in the other place where that church revival was. It's happening in other places, too. Right. We're seeing it happen even right here. I was invited to speak at the Awana program at my local church and uh, just preached on uh, what does it look like to follow Jesus and how when our lives get up close with Jesus, they ought to change. And I asked this simple question, like, have you have you felt like your life has changed as a result of getting up close to Jesus? And there might have been, I think, 20, 25 people in the room at that time. And uh, I challenged them. I said, hey, is there anyone here who you haven't you haven't decided you wanted to go all in for Jesus. Like you haven't given him everything. You haven't given him all you are. And you haven't seen your life change because you haven't really gotten up close to him. And uh, I had everybody bow their heads and raise their hands. And uh, 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 several kids raised their hands. And then um, I was like, wow, that's awesome. Uh, you know, following Jesus can be really challenging. So I'm going to encourage us to take on a, another challenge. And I, I invited the kids who had uh, raised their hands to say out loud, Jesus, uh, I want all of you. I I, I, I want to go all in for you. And uh, it took a few seconds because everybody in this room knows everybody. Uh, but <laughs> one kid finally was like, Jesus, I want all of you just yelled it out for the whole room to hear. Praise the Lord. Wow. And uh, then other kids started doing it. Like one kid here, one kid there, one kid there, one kid there. Wow. Like I was praising the Lord. I got a text the next day from the leader who said uh, they saw the beginnings of revival that night. Mm. Um, so just praising God. We're seeing revival take place. And uh one one life lesson out of that it might just take one person saying hey i want to i want to go all in for jesus to to spark other people to go all in for jesus yeah it makes me think of um john 12:42 where it says many of the leaders believed in jesus but they would not confess him mm. for fear of being put out of the synagogue the jewish temple and i'm like wow uh, huh, that doesn't seem like saving faith. Mm. Uh, Romans ten nine. If you believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, meaning Jesus rose from the dead, you also believe in the cross and what he did, and confess with your 
mouth that Jesus is Lord, your mouth that's out loud, that's spoken, that's a public decision. Or Jesus says, if you acknowledge me before men, I'll acknowledge you before my Father in heaven. Mm. Uh, There's, uh, I think, a lot of people that may go to church on Sunday. They may have said a prayer once, but they haven't given Jesus their life. They don't actually know him. Mm. And what more would revival look like than those who have been going to church who don't really know Jesus to get their lives set on fire get saved, give everything to Jesus, and then get out on mission and community and see others one to Christ. Right. I mean, how radical would our, would the, our, our nation would radically change as a result of just everyone who confesses to be a Christian to actually live <laughs> like a Christian. Sorry, I don't mean to laugh. That's a serious thing. No, it's true though. Um, I, I guess I'll end on this verse, Nate, unless you have something else to share. Uh, but I've been praying this verse uh, for for our nation, for our ministry, for others. And um, I'm thinking we're starting to see glimpses of it. But Isaiah chapter 59, uh, verse 19 to 21, it says, So they shall fear the name of the Lord from the west and his glory from the rising of the sun. That's the east, for those of you who don't know. Uh, it I, always rises in the east? <laughs> yeah, always well, in the east. I thought it it just surrounded the shh, 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 whatever. Finish the verse. Uh, for he will come like a rushing stream, which the wind of the Lord drives, and a redeemer will come to Zion, to those in Jacob who turn from their transgression, declares the Lord. And as for me, this is my covenant with them, says the Lord. My spirit that is upon you and my words that I've put in your mouth shall not depart out of your mouth or out of the mouth of your offspring, or out of the mouth of your children's offspring, says the Lord, from this time forth forevermore. So I get it. There's a a context of this passage. uh, But broadly, I've been taking the truths of this passage and praying, Lord, would we see people come to know you from the east to the west, all over the globe? Would your power come in double force as you pour out your spirit like a rushing stream, like this blowing wind? And those who turn from their sin and turn to you, would you come to them, Lord? Would you... Would you pour out your spirit, put our word, your words in our mouths uh, that it wouldn't depart from us, that we could proclaim who you are and that would happen uh, in our lives, in our kids' lives, in their kids' lives, and even spiritual generations, those we lead to Christ and those that they'll lead to Christ. Uh, and, and would you see, Lord, would this revival break out across our nation and, and impact the globe? Amen. Let's have let's see it happen. Uh, please join us uh, in praying for this. Uh, we know that God answers the prayers of those who uh, pray to Him. <laughs> we know that He's faithful to do that. So uh, pray, pray that God would spark a revival, not Amen. just in our nation but in our world. Um, and I know this is a really short episode, but I don't know if it really needed to be much longer because ultimately. Like we're just we're just wanting to see more of Jesus, more of his kingdom in this world. And so if you're listening, man, uh, number one, go pray, please make sure first you've given Jesus everything in your life. If you've got any idols, lay them down. Uh, number two, pray and uh, pray for revival. Number three, pray. And number four, put it into action and start go telling people about Jesus. Yeah. Let's get after it, guys. Come on. I'm, I'm so fired up, man. I. I'm just dreaming of this wildfire taking place spiritually. And uh, I don't know about you, but I want to have some part of it. Yeah. I mean, how cool would that be? Get on the train. Well, let's get after it, guys. Thanks for joining this episode of Fuel for the Harvest, and we'll see you out in the harvest fields.